Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to episode number 96 of Let's Go Racing with David Starr. Tyler Jones here with you. So glad to have you with us. Coming up on today's show, we will discuss Kevin Harvick's retirement announcement. We'll look back on the Hall of Fame career of Kevin Harvick and also look at the top potential replacement options for the four-car at Stuart Haas Racing next season. We'll dive into our news and notes. We'll have our Ask David segment coming up at the end of the show as well. As always, David Starr joins us right now. David, uh, how we doing? I mentioned you're pretty good after that uh, Cowboys win the other night. Man, that was amazing, man. I was, it was amazing how, how great they played. And, uh, man, I'm, I'm a big Tom Brady fan as well, you know. So it was just sad to see Tom not have such a great game. But the Cowboys, man, they uh, – it was a hell of a game, you know. But man, guys, it's man. There's a lot going on in our sport, man. A lot of NASCAR news and uh, lots of lots of cool stuff for a lot of different teams, drivers, and uh, it's exciting, man. The the racing season's just right around the corner, dude. Uh, you know, and uh, a lot of excitement in there, guys. David, uh, I know you have some stuff that you're going to announce soon, not on today's show, but in the very near future. Tell me about this. What is the mindset of drivers like you and others that are right in the middle of crunch time where I'm sure you're still trying to enjoy life at home, but there's no way that you're not waking up in the morning and not thinking about Daytona either? We mean wake up. Hell, I can't go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's kind of the mindset, Tyler. You know, it just uh, – you know, we're all the different drivers and teams. We're all blessed that we got great partners and trying to finalize. Uh, you know, you know, lots of us are trying to finalize uh, who our main partners are and who's on board with us, and uh, that way they can lock in, make a commitment to a team. It's uh, man, it's it's exciting. It's stressful. Uh, you know, and uh, it's hard to sleep at night, but uh, a lot of excitement in the air and. Uh, but man, it's tough, you know. It's just uh, a, a sport that we love so much. It just, uh, you know, the funding's a big part of the or of the of the sport. Um, you know, us drivers, you know, most of us got to bring funding, and and uh, thank God for all the different partners we have. But uh, it's a stressful time, buddy. But uh, you know, again, you know, I, I keep saying stressful, but it, it, a lot of excitement goes along with that as well. Yeah, you don't need no therapy, that's for sure. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. <laughs> Dom Gallagher from the RacingExperts.com joins us as well. Dom, uh, how, how are you enjoying these uh, next few weeks? Uh, it's about to ramp up here uh, pretty soon, just like that, right? Oh, 100%. I'm enjoying playing full-time dad, full-time husband right now. But, man, covering the sport is a 24-7, 365 job. And like you were mentioning there with David, there's always some news churning about this time of the year, which there's a lot we're going to get to here in a few minutes. But, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And I get to see you guys in Daytona here in a few weeks. Yeah. You know, I'll be, I'll be honest, guys. Uh, you know my day job. I cover the NFL. And uh, I, was, uh, I was working the Seahawks-Niners game on a Saturday and during the middle of the game, there was an advertisement that came up for the clash. And I'm like, man, I'm having fun here, but I, I can't wait till racing season. You know, we move on from one thing right into the next. And uh, now that most of my football coverage for the year, for the, for the season it is done. Like I, I can't wait till we uh, finally get this thing going and begin our uh, NASCAR 2023 season. With that, we begin today's show with, uh, some news that I don't think was shocking, but still a major story that Kevin Harvick is going to retire at the end of the 2023 season. This will be his final full-time year in the NASCAR Cup Series. And then he will transition to the NASCAR on Fox booth next year, joining Clint Boyer and Mike Joy. And we heard everybody and anybody uh, with their strong statements about Kevin Harvick. Tony Stewart talked about him being the flagship driver of that organization, that he hopes that he can go out on top and what he meant to him as a friend, what he's done for that team. We know that he's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. He's won a championship, 60 career wins. And then also you factor in just what he's meant to the sport uh, for his – you know, legacy-wise, beyond just winning races, here was a guy that 
right out of the jump, brought that Goodrich car back to victory lane at Atlanta within weeks of taking over from Dale Earnhardt when he passed away. A, uh, a storybook career in a lot of ways. David, I know you've been a big fan of Kevin for a long time. If you listen to this show during the season, about every week, David picks Kevin Harvick to win, it seems. <laughs> Uh, David, tell me about, about Kevin Harvick from your perspective, not just as the race car driver, but the man, Kevin Harvick. It seemed like he was just so well-respected and well-liked around the garage. Man, he's all, he just a great, obviously, we know uh, the storybook career that Kevin's had. He's a hell of a race car driver, one of the all-time best, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you know, the legacy he's left, uh, you know, that he, that he will leave, uh, but man, he's done a lot for our sport, man. And, and back, you know, you you back way back up to 2001 when we we lost the late great Dale Earnhardt, you know, and having you know having Richard Childers give Kevin Harvick that call and to see Kevin get in the 29, you know, GM Goodrich Chevrolet that that belonged to Dale Earnhardt, you know, and and to see him get in that car and and all the emotions that all of us had, you know, um, and seeing Kevin bring that uh, number 29 Chevrolet Monte Carlo, Goodrich Chevrolet, whatever it was called, to victory lane, just barely beating Jeff Gordon. I mean, it was such a great Cinderella feel-good story, and I, it was just great for all the fans. It was just, I don't know if you call it therapy. It's just what the sport needed, you know, and, uh, man, you know, not only <clears throat> Kevin's just – what he's done for our sport, uh, the fierce competitor in him. And he's brought a lot of uh, excitement to all the people that follow NASCAR just because he's a fierce competitor, you know. And, uh, you know, he uh, he's not afraid to let you know what's on his mind, how he feels about something. You know, you got to like that rawness about him. And, uh, you know, I will definitely miss seeing Kevin Harvick competing week in and week out. But, you know, guys, as as a man, as a friend, he's always been a straight up guy, a great friend of mine, and I know he's a he's a great family member, uh, a family man with a beautiful family. Uh, you know, and you think about Kevin, you know, you think about you look some of these great quarterbacks, you know, and uh, um, you know, you, you you watch their careers and the Super Bowls they win, and, and then trying to, you know, when is it the right time to 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 say say goodbye to the game, you know, and uh, 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 you know, Kevin, you know, I and, and you think about the the fierce, you know, when you're a fierce competitor, whether you're a quarterback or a NASCAR race car driver, man, you're all in, you know, you're focused 110 percent, your commitments to your sponsors, to the manufacturers, and you know, it takes it, it takes a toll on your family, you know what I mean? Because when you're all in, man, you're all in. And, and, and sometimes your kids, your wife, your family kind of, you know, they're kind of, uh, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but, you know, your your first priority and every, all that effort and energy goes into winning races and winning a championship. And, and Kevin has done that, what, for 22, 23 years it's amazing, you know, and and for him to step back after this season to kind of go into the retirement area, you know, I think he's put his time in, you know. I, I don't know, you know, we you look at football and you look at Tom Brady, what he's done, you know, and he obviously, Tyler, y'all know more about that than I do, but he retired last year and, and, and wanted to spend more time with his family, didn't want to – you know, that total commitment all in, you know, you hear football players say, man, it's just after all the years, it takes a toll on you, you know, and, and you and you miss out on a lot of family stuff. And, you know, it's 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 cool to see Kevin, you know, announce that 2023 will be his final year. But, man, he's laid he's he's left a mark on this sport uh, that not many have. You know what I mean? And, and I'm honored to be his friend. And it's been an honor to watch him race like he's raced all these years. Yeah, it has. Uh, Dominic, I'm sure you've had interactions with him. I've had uh, a couple myself. Uh, tell me about uh, your experience uh, with Kevin and what you're going to remember from his uh, Hall of Fame career. I think when you cover people, you, you kind of look, I guess, that lens, right? You, you tend to see how drivers are towards the media, towards their fans. And I think that gives you a good gauge of how that person is all around. I think that's a good gauge, at least as a professional athlete. 
You look at Kevin Harvick, and you hear about all these stories of all these kids coming up to him, and he he invites kids into Victory Lane with him to take photos. He's making lifelong fans. He knows what he's doing with all that, but I think that comes from a genuine place, too. You always hear about good interactions with him and his fans. Now, the media, maybe not so much. He's very feisty, <laughs> and he's very fiery. And, and to me, Tyler, just as an observer on this, and I don't know if you'd agree or not with this, but I think a lot of drivers weigh out the media. You look at television. Of course, that's going to give you the most exposure. And then radio, that's going to give you your second most. And then the print guys kind of take a back seat to that. And, and I've noticed a different Kevin Harvick with the print media over the years, where he's kind of one, two, three word answers, whereas he'll talk to the TV cameras and the radio people all day. But there's nothing taking offense or nothing personal against that. I think that just speaks to the competitor that Kevin Harvick is. And I think that's what I'm going to remember most, Tyler, is how fire he is after he gets out of that race car. If he hasn't won, him and Kyle Busch, they have like that same mentality, that same we didn't win. They're mad. They're frustrated. They're pissed off. But that's the competitive nature of those two drivers. So uh, I've had a couple interactions with Kevin. Uh, I interviewed him uh, twice in a two-day stretch at uh, Kansas Speedway several years ago when he won the pole, and then he won the race the next day. And uh, this was in Kansas City at Kansas Speedway. And I remember, uh, you know, doing radio there in, in, uh, in Kansas at the time. I had to ask him what we ask everybody that visits town. You know, you, you tried any Kansas City barbecue, you know, what do you think of it? And uh, he, his answer just shocked me. It was the one thing you never want to hear from somebody coming to Kansas City. He said, well... I don't really like – I don't like barbecue, to be honest. Like, no, you, you can't <laughs> not like barbecue, Kevin. What are you talking about? I mean, he was the Bush Light driver, and he doesn't like barbecue. I mean, beer and barbecue go right together. Come on, Kevin. Uh, but in all seriousness, I, I enjoyed my interactions with Kevin. I thought Kevin was great, and uh, I'm excited to see uh, his next chapter that he's still going to be involved in. Um, you know, he's, he's got, of course, his, uh, his sports marketing and agency company, uh, that he runs as well, KHI management, which represents athletes and media members and all sorts of stuff there. Of course, he did a great job running KHI in, uh, in the Bush series for a long time too. And we know he's got a bright future in TV. I mean, he's not really going anywhere. He's just stepping away from the race car is all here, but, um, just a competitor in, in in every sense of the wor- the way, you know, David, we talk about, you know, guys that want to win and that drive to win. Um, we don't mention, I mean, besides guys like David, David Starr, there's not very many David Stars out there that are running when they're 56 years old. Um, but <laughs> you look at Kevin, his final season, he's going to be 47. He, he started – before Jimmy Johnson and went, what, two or three years after Jimmy retired for full-time racing, he saw all these guys come and go over the years. The longevity is incredible. All the wins, the championship, the Daytona 500, all of that is just something spectacular. And the way that he closed and finished races, I mean, you could argue, David, there was nobody you wanted in your in your rearview mirror any less than Kevin Harvick. I mean, this guy was was clutch in some big moments. He knew how to track guys down and get it done at the end. Man, he knew how to get it done. And, yeah, you 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 know, coming down to the end of the race, you definitely didn't want to see Kevin Harvick in your rearview mirror because you know he was uh, he was coming to pass you and to win the race. And, uh, you know, last couple of years for Stuart Haas and, and uh, Kevin Harvick, been a little bit of a challenge with the with the car chains, you know, the, uh, the next-gen car and uh, – but, man, I just knew that with Stuart Haas as the resources and with the driver, Kevin, the drive and the driver that Kevin Harvard is, uh, you know, that, man, the wins were going to come, you know. And, man, when they came this past year, I mean, you know, they finally hit their stride towards the end, made the chase. They won that final race. I think it was at Michigan or, or I don't remember where it was. But, you know, to win back-to-back races was just incredible. I remember – uh, you know, hearing some drivers talking about Kevin, you know, and you know, he's over the hill and he doesn't have it anymore, man. I, 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 man, they, they don't know the same Kevin Harvick I know, you know, what I mean, because that guy, uh, he still has it. He can win a championship this year. I believe we're going to see him win some races. And, uh, man, it's, uh, 
you know, it, it's nice to see somebody go out on their terms and how they want to go a step out of the sport. Like you said earlier, Tyler, he's not, he's just stepping out of the race car. He ain't going anywhere. He's going to be part of the industry, the sport for years to come. But, uh, but anyway, he's kind of doing it like he wants to do it. He's going to do it his way. And that's kind of the Kevin Harvick's way. He's going to do it how he wants to see it done. And, uh, and I believe, you know, when it comes towards the end of the season, this season that we'll see the, the number four Kevin Harvick car uh, running for a championship. You well, know, Tyler, I want to bring this up too and get your thoughts on this because a few years back, Kevin Harvick had announced a lengthy contract extension. We're talking like 2019, where he had said he consulted with Rusty Wallace, Mark Martin, athletes outside of NASCAR about, hey, should I weigh out retirement? Should I keep going? He ultimately signed through 2023 and he said he signed because of how competitive the team was. So, in a way, do you feel like, okay, he went. 2021 winless he had the two wins last year but do you feel like he's stepping away because maybe he doesn't feel like he's as competitive as he was five years ago or is that not even a factor here I don't think it's a factor I think you know his you know you can't ever count out Kevin Harvick I mean you know we we never really considered him uh you know when obviously we all pick who's going to win the race on the podcast you know that next weekend and I always pick Kevin because man He's a fierce competitor. He, he ain't out there to ride around and finish fifth or tenth. You know, he's a he's a champion. He's a winner. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, it took him a while to figure out this next-gen race car, and I knew when they figured it out that he was going to be a force to be reckoned with again. You know, I mean, you look at the, the year before that when he won. I don't, I don't remember how many races he won, but, man, I think it was nine or ten of them. And, uh, and that's amazing. Uh, but, you know, I, I believe, and I don't know this for a fact, um, you know, he's still very well capable and still one of the best out there competing today, uh, you know. But, uh, you know, I'm sure there was a lot of things that went into uh, making this huge decision to, to step out of the race car, you know. And, and, and I think maybe, and I, and I don't have no facts on this, but just knowing him just as a father and a husband, you know, I think he's probably, you know, he probably there's comes a point in time where it's like, you know, I don't need to win any more races. I don't need to win another championship. Uh, you know, I've done all that. He's at peace with his career. I mean, if all every race car driver in America could could mimic to, uh, Kevin Harvick, we do it in a New York minute. You know what I mean? Because his career has been incredible. Uh, but uh, but I, I think there's been a lot of. Uh, I think he probably made a lot of these decisions uh, or made this decision uh, on family time. You know what I mean? That's that's my opinion. I don't know that to be truth or uh, that would be my opinion. You know, I think he did all that he needed to do uh, and still competitive and still can win. But I think it's time that he wants to kind of slow down because, again, we talked about it earlier. I mean, when you're winning races, winning championships, you're all in, man. That's that's. That's everything, you know, 110% of your energy, your effort, your thoughts, you know, and, and really your, your, your family, you know, they, they don't have dad and husband full time, you know, and there comes a point in time in your career where you're like, man, you know, I'm, I'm going to go to a baseball game. I'm going to go to a race. I'm going to go to a movie. You know, you want to spend more time with your family, you know, and, uh, and I think that was probably my opinion, uh, a big a big factor in him making this decision. Right. And uh, I'm, he's already got one kid uh, that's getting into racing, and um, I'm sure he wants to be around for that and everything. So, yeah, it's going to be uh, awesome to see uh, what's next for, uh, for Kevin Harvick on that front. Uh, Dom, uh, from a historical perspective, and I know he still has one more full-time season to go, but, I mean, he, he did everything, right? I mean, this guy won all the big races. Daytona, Coke 600, Bristol Night Race, uh, you know, the Brickyard, won the championship. We mentioned 60 wins. Uh, he won in the Xfinity Series. He won in the Cup Series. Um, I mean, a complete career. And I still feel like we got shafted a bit because RCR was a mess and Stuart Haas was up and down. I mean, if he would have been with, like, Team Hendrick, who would have known how many more races he could have even won then, you know, potentially uh, throughout his career? I mean, uh, historically speaking, I, I think Kevin Harvick goes down as one of the all-time greats and probably should actually, I think, 
get more consideration considering that he was always the best driver on his teams and got the most that he could, and he was kind of held back to some extent. I don't think you're wrong there. 60 wins, man, a championship, like you said, the big crown jewel race events, Darlington, Bristol, Indianapolis, Daytona. The list goes on. Kevin Harvick's lengthy NASCAR padded resume speaks for itself. He's going to certainly retire as one of the greatest to have ever raced in the NASCAR Cup Series. And not to mention those business savvy skills and the well-rounded person that Kevin Harvick is. He, he doesn't think like most people. I think he sees where innovation can be done and where you can, can really thrive. And that is on the racetrack. That's in his race cars and his crew chiefs. And that's in his business mindset and all of that. When is the last time you really think about it? that we have a driver like Kevin Harvick who's going to be running their final year and is still running in the top 10 more often than not. Guys, I got to think back. The last driver that really fits that mold was Jeff Gordon in 2015 and Rusty Wallace in 2005. It's not often you get to go out on your own terms, let alone be at a very competitive level like Kevin Harvick will likely be this year. Right, because we saw a fall off with Jimmy. We saw a fall off with Tony Stewart, Dale Jr., um, it, it is something else uh, that he's winning races when he's retiring, that he's going out on top of sorts uh, in this circumstance. David, you know, I, I would beg to argue, if he would have been with, let's say, Hendrick or Gibbs his whole career, we'd be talking about him maybe having a couple more championships and probably 75-plus wins. I mean, it's amazing that, with the problems that happened at RCR with the ups and downs at Stuart Haas racing, and he still got 60 wins in a championship. I mean, the way the cookie crumbles sometimes, I mean, if, if, if Harvick was at Gibbs or Hendrick, I think his numbers would be even better. Yeah. Uh, Tyler, I, I definitely agree with you on that, you know, but Hey, you know, he it's uh, he's had a storybook career. It's uh you know, it's amazing. And, and like y'all said, he's going to go down being an all, one of the all-time best race car drivers ever, you know. But, yeah, you could argue that fact. I, I definitely agree with you. If he would have been with the Hendricks over all those years or uh, Joe Gibbs racing, definitely would have had, you know, I, I believe a lot more wins, you know. But, man, 60 wins, you know. I, I don't know where, you know, Dominic, you're the historian, you know, I think that must rank up there in the top seven or eight all-time wins. You know, is am I correct about that? He's in the top ten. Yes, I believe that's tenth all-time on the NASCAR wins list. The next guy ahead of him would be the late, great Dale Earnhardt. Now, 16 wins is going to be a very tall task to order in 2023. But Kevin Harvick will certainly get closer to that mark. We know he's going to win in his final full-time year. And I believe he's been going back and forth with Kyle Busch on the wins list <laughs> um, over the last few years. So, um, I bet Kyle ends up ahead of him when it's all said and done. But nonetheless, uh, great careers there for uh, both those guys, uh, for sure. So now the the big question, that number four car um, is going to be one of the most coveted rides, I think, in, uh, in the sport with um, Rodney Childress. We haven't heard anything about him leaving um, or being promoted or anything. If he is still there in the crew chief, and I think that Rodney is one of the best crew chiefs in the sport, and Stuart Haas, Ford Racing Equipment and everything, I mean, there's going to be a lot of people very interested in that job. Let, let's look at the – the in, internally, I think that the only option would be Cole Custer. Uh, I don't think Riley Herbst is really a candidate for that ride. And with, with, with Cole Custer – Dom, I mean, this is a guy that lost his cup ride. He's going to have to go out there and just have a bang-up Xfinity season. He could still work his way and get back into good right graces and get back to the, a cup ride and be in that four car potentially. But, I mean, we're, we're going to have to see Cole Custer, you know, really have a prove-it type year in the Xfinity series for that chance. We're going to have to see a replica. Was it 2019 where he won eight or nine races, made the championship four as a contender? He needs a year like that. And I, to my knowledge, I, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe either of you know, I don't believe we're seeing Cole Custer make select cup races in 2023, at least at this time. But who's not to say that could happen? We did see him make some starts in those part-time days with Rick Ware Racing. We saw Ryan Priest do that, and they have that alliance with the team. And he, right, he can't do stuff part-time for Stuart Haas. 
exactly. he could do for like a Rick Ware or something potential. Yeah. So maybe that's a way to keep fresh on the gen or the next gen vehicle. But internally, Cole Custer seems like the only guy, or maybe Ryan Priest. Does Ryan Priest take that flagship number four car? Right. I, I, I don't see them moving him from the 41 to the four. Um, you know, I, I think that he, you know, is kind of set in stone there. But David, what, what, what do you think is going through the head of Cole Custer right now? I mean, not only does this guy want to win races and win that Xfinity championship, but he's got a, got a chip on his shoulder. I mean, he is the obvious option, right, to, to, to get back in the Cup Series, get back at Stuart Haas and be in that four car potentially, right? I mean, you know, I, I uh, you know, we, whoever ends up back in the four car, man, what an opportunity of a lifetime. Rodney Childress, uh, you know, replacing Kevin Harvick after Kevin steps away from the sport or steps out of the race car. But you're talking about a championship caliber team, you know, with Rod, led by Rodney Childress. And like you said, Ralph Shates motor for support. I mean, man, what an opportunity. Uh, you know, it's right there for Cole Custer to go get. Obviously, it's right there for him. But, you know, it, it's uh, whoever is uh, lucky enough or whoever earns the right to to sit in that four car, uh, man, what an opportunity of a lifetime. You know what I mean? And uh, right now, just hearing y'all talk about it, Cole Custer obviously is the uh, – you know, the leading candidate, you know what I mean? But, but who's to say, you know, uh, you know, you know, who's to say, you know, somebody else could get end up in it. I, I don't know, you know what I mean? But just whatever driver gets that phone call, gets that opportunity, man, it don't get much better than that. You know what I mean? But I, but I definitely agree with y'all right now before our season even gets cranked up and started Cole Custer, I would say, would be the the leading candidate. But you know, we obviously, you know, you got to get, we're going to see how it all plays out for him. Right. The fact that they didn't cut ties, that they just sent him down to the Xfinity Series, they still believe in him. They want him around. Um, you know, we'll we'll see ultimately. The other free agents after this upcoming season, I'll just go through this list here, and we'll kind of narrow it down. Michael McDowell, Todd Gillen. Alex Bowman, I would be shocked if Alex leaves Hendrick, though. Um, Denny Hamlin, obviously, that's not going to happen with the Toyota connection. If he leaves Gibbs, it's for 2311. It's not going to a Ford team. Martin Truex, I don't see Martin leaving Gibbs either. Justin Haley, probably going to stick around at colleague. Noah Gregson, that would be as bit of a surprise if he left Legacy Motor Club after his first year. More on them later. Corey LaJoy, Corey would have to have some type of an impressive year to earn that ride. Ty Dillon, not going to happen. Um, Ross Chastain and Daniel Suarez and then Harrison Burton are the other ones. The only real free agent, I guess, the the, the two best ones would be Alex Bowman and, and Ross Chastain, but I, I don't think Alex Bowman is leaving. Ross, though, that one kind of intrigues me. Dom, if they can make a good offer to Ross of some sorts, doesn't Ross kind of feel like a Tony Stewart type driver? The aggression, the the way he drives on track, absolutely. And he'd be crazy to not at least consider an opportunity if Stewart Haas Racing were to come in and say, hey, we'll give you this for X amount of dollars, X amount of years on your contract. Now, granted, Ross Chastain and Trackhouse have built a great, great thing here over the last two, three years. But – or I'm sorry, last, what, one year? Because, yeah. yeah, he drove the 42 car. But Justin Marks and Ross Chastain have that relationship. But you'd be crazy to not consider an offer from one of the powerhouse teams. But what they're building at Trackhouse is very, very special. It is a great problem to have for Ross Chastain right now. He's right. got leverage. He does. He does. Uh, David, what do you think about that idea? Could Ross Chastain <laughs> yeah. be the guy to take over that four car? Well, I mean, you, you got a good point there, but I, I don't see that happening. You know, Ross Chastain and Justin Marks and the track house team, man, they, you know, we, we, we're talking about Kevin Harvick, the four team Stuart Haas racing, but the truth of the matter is Ross Chastain almost won a championship this year. I think he finished second in points. Was he second, third, whatever he was, but, uh, you know, I, I didn't, uh, you know, I, <laughs> right now I'd have to say that, 
you know, uh, that Stuart Haas is behind track house racing on, you know, technology, performance and everything. You know, I feel like the track house racing with Ross Chastain, you know, they have really stepped up their game and, and man, they're a, they're a powerhouse championship caliber team. You know, I, I, I don't know. I, I'd, I'd be, it'd be a big surprise to me to see that happen. I don't see that happening personally, but, uh, but anyway, it's going to be interesting throughout the year to see, uh, you know, what drivers kind of scoot up to the forefront for possibilities taking over the four car. You know, like we said, we, the leading candidate is Cole Custer right now, you know, and and uh, and, and not that, uh, you know, Cole Custer, you know, it, it ain't like he got demoted or, you know, uh, you know, I, you know, the business side of the sport maybe had maybe have gotten in the way a little bit, you know, Ryan Priest is just a one heck of a race car driver, but, you know, who's to say that Cole Custer with the sponsorship stuff going on, uh, who's to say that he didn't have enough sponsorship and Ryan Priest had more. And, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, things that are probably going on behind the scenes that we don't know. Uh, and, and it makes an organization have to make a call like that. But, uh, but uh, I, I don't know, man. I just think uh, uh, throughout the season, I think uh, whoever's going to replace Kevin Harvick will be kind of a, a story that we kind of follow throughout the season. And it's going to have us all intrigued and uh, keep us all paying attention to, you know, to rumors and to see what's going on there. Do you think right. the decision, guys, has been already made and it's just not publicly known? Or do you think the jury's still out on it? No, I don't think a decision's been made because – Remember, at this time last year, we were told Eric Almarola was going to retire, and they spent half the year trying to convince him to come back, which he did. That's another factor in all this, too, David, is Eric Almarola's future. This could be Eric Almarola's last year, and Stuart Haas might not have one but two seats potentially to fill. Yeah, just it's going to be interesting to see uh, how it all plays out. You know, that being said, obviously – Eric was really adamant about retiring. He wanted to spend more time with his family and his kids. And, and uh, you know, and it was kind of interesting. We talked about it on our podcast, you know. It's like, man, you got a great sponsor that has all the funding and the backing any team could ever want. Uh, and you're driving for Stuart Haas. You got a great uh, – you're a great spokesperson for a great partner. He wasn't uh, an old guy either. No, I mean, you got the manufacturers behind you. You just won a race at New Hampshire. Uh, man, I, I don't know. I mean, who, who would ever step away from that? That's what you work your whole career to to have that opportunity. And I was really shocked how adamant and how Eric was really saying, hey, no, this is it, you know. But, you know, uh, but the sponsor and Eric has such a great relationship. You know, he he's staying another year, you know, and, and – you know, we don't really know where his mindset is. And, and it really, I think a lot of it comes down to, you know, how you perform and how well the team's doing. And just, you know, when it comes down to halfway through the season or three quarters of the way, you know, uh, you know, but there's a lot of factors that are going to come into play. And, and, and y'all are right. You could be looking that Stuart Haas not only has one, not only one seat to fill, it might have two cars, you know, to fill. And, uh, and there's a lot of young, new talent coming up in our sport. You know, you look at the truck series, you look at the Xfinity series. I mean, heck, you know, one of these young kids that really uh, could have a breakout year and really set the world on fire, I mean, they might get that phone call. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. And I just – whoever goes in that car, I, I hope it's a deserving driver that's worked his tail off and he's getting a phone call of a lifetime, you know, and – and, uh, you know, it's it's going to be something that we're going to follow for the season, that's for sure. Since we're throwing stuff out, I'll, I'll just mention one last thing. We'll move on, Dom. Um, with, the riot, with these spots open and, you know, a lot of time has passed, I mean, I, I, I still feel like Carl Edwards has unfinished business, and he hasn't been able to get in the Hall of Fame yet. Carl, come back for a year or two, earn that Hall of Fame nomination. Please, I want Carl back. I know it's a long shot to Hail Mary, but this could be it. This could be the golden opportunity for Carl. But would it be one of those situations to play devil's advocate where he comes back after multiple years out, like how Ricky Rudd did in 07 and ran 25th every week? How Matt Kenseth came back 
after the Kyle Larson incident and ran like 20th every week. Isn't it just better for Carl to stay away and we remember him for being a top five driver? Maybe, but I mean, he's not a Hall of Famer right now. He hasn't gotten in. You know, he's got 28 wins. He's got Xfinity Series championship. He's going to get in. His time is coming, Tyler. I mean, it hasn't happened yet. He, we don't know. I mean, I, he can he can go out there and officially earn Hall of Fame status, coming back and winning a championship. And I still think Carl, had, you know, he didn't forget how to race a race car. I would love to see Carl come back, but we'll see. Um, we'll uh, get to our news and notes segment. We got to ask David coming up here in a, just a second as well. Dom. That was that was a news segment in itself, just there on Kevin Harvick. Uh, what else we got going on? Well, we're going to get to the rest of the news and notes here in a second. But before we do, just to remember that Let's Go Racing with David Starr is presented by Olipop, and we have partnered with Olipop Beverages. Don't forget that you can use the code Let's Go Fifteen or David Starr at drinkolipop.com. Olipop is loaded up with a bunch of botanicals prebiotics and plant fiber, and it's healthy for your gut. And in fact, David, you got your case of Olipop last week. What'd you think of it? Well, my favorite's this classic root beer, man. Olipop's pretty awesome. It's very tasty. I was surprised how good it tastes, you know what I mean? But it's a pretty good drink. I really love it. And uh, man, what an honor it is to, to the, for them to send, uh, send us some of these uh, awesome uh, drinks. And, and I love my I love my classic root beer, so that's my favorite so far, Don. There we go. We're we'll have to get you that Dr. Good one. It tastes like its competitor that's named Doctor, and it's just what the doctor ordered. At least that's what the can said. You know <laughs> with that story. I think that's that's where it's at. Awesome, man. Awesome. <laughs> On to right, like what the doctor orders, that's for sure. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, healthy, healthy soda. Tyler, you can drink soda and not feel guilty about it. Beautiful. <laughs> 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 on to our news and notes segment here team track house with their project 91 are announcing they will not be fielding another car for the daytona 500 unlike other teams attempting to have another entry in the great american race justin marks took to twitter earlier this week confirming that the project 91 car entering this year's daytona 500 just is not an option but rather wants to put an emphasis on the team's resources for ross chastain and daniel suarez Project 91 made its debut last August at Watkins Glen International with F1 star Kimi Raikkonen driving the vehicle. Ultimately finished last in a crash, but it had some great speed in the vehicle. We might see the car at some more road course races, guys, but not for the Daytona 500. David, uh, I I'm actually not surprised by this because of the emphasis of international drivers in that car it makes sense to have the emphasis on road courses for those said type of drivers that come from more of that background. Yeah, I'm not surprised about it either. You know, they, uh, you know, they, they have, uh, they're a championship caliper team. And, uh, you know, uh, I think Justin, Justin Mark is a great owner and a great businessman and man, you know, they came so close in 2023 of winning the championship, man, they were so close and, uh, you know, I think they're pretty focused, uh, all their efforts and everything to try to figure out how to get one of their cars into a cup championship. You know what I mean? They want a cup championship. And, uh, you know, I, I uh, it doesn't surprise me. Sometimes, you know, uh, you know, you add a third car for the Daytona 500. It takes a little bit away from your your other, you know, your your main cars. So it's not surprising at all. And, and, and Dominic, I agree with you. They're probably going to use that car for some road courses for uh, some of the international drivers to come to America and, and compete on the road courses. And, uh, but man, I, I believe that that team is very focused and uh, doesn't surprise me at all, Tyler. Yeah. Yeah. I agree to that. Uh, Dominic, what else? Well, unlike track house racing, 2311 is actually going to be fielding a one-off entry in the Daytona 500 legendary motocross racer, Travis Pastrana will be trying to attempt to make his NASCAR Cup Series debut. And not motocross racer, all-around motorsports legend, Travis Pastrana. He's run some Xfinity races. He's been known to run the truck race out at Las Vegas a time or three. But Travis Pastrana will be trying to make his first NASCAR Cup Series race. So I got a few thoughts on this. Uh, I love Travis Pastrana. The dude, he's he's a total badass. Um, I'm excited to see him in Daytona. it would be awesome that he'll be around. Uh, twofold, third team for 2311, 
to me, that's interesting. Not Kurt Busch in the car, but that does kind of tell me, kind of reading between the lines, that whenever Kurt is ready, because remember, he never said he was retiring. He said he was stepping away from full-time racing because he hadn't been medically cleared. Whenever Kurt is ready, the resources are there at 2311 for Kurt. They still consider him a team member and everything. To me, that shows me that they're they're pushing forward. They're going to have something for Kurt when he's ready to come back. And then the other thing that I, I read into this is um, Elio Castroneves wanted to run the Daytona 500. No ride available at track house. 2311 here is going with Pastrana. We know about Jimmy racing with a Petty GMS. I don't know if there's a spot for Elio. I wanted to see Elio run Daytona, but I don't know if there's a ride available. Uh, a lot to make of uh, that Travis Pastrana announcement there, David. Absolutely. And, and I think, you know, for Travis Pastrana, man, what a – he's man, like Tyler, he, you described him well, just a badass, man. The guy's <laughs> jumping over buildings and off of buildings. And, uh, you know, he, he has no fear of anything, you know. And it's cool when he, when he comes over to the NASCAR side and runs an Xfinity race or a truck race, you know. It brings a lot of new eyeballs. And uh, he's just a great guy. And uh, for him, uh, personally, to have the opportunity with such a with such a uh, big uh, team uh, as 2311 uh, and, and to maybe make the Daytona 500, I, I would say for Travis, that's probably the experience of, that's an opportunity of a lifetime. You know, I know he's, you know, he's kind of like evil can evil made all these jumps and uh, what he's known for, but uh, making the Day Daytona 500 competing in the Daytona 500 NASCAR's biggest race for probably the world's largest athlete in the world, Michael Jordan uh, and Denny Hamlin, it don't get much better than that. And I think there'll be a lot of eyeballs on that effort. And uh, and I'm I'm glad it's Travis Prestana. I think he uh, I think it, it brings a, a more of an audience to our sport than what we would be having. And uh, man, what a cool opportunity for him! And uh, you know, and uh, and you know, Tyler, to hear you speaking about Kurt Busch, I, I just hope you're right about that. I I, I wasn't me. Kurt's my buddy, my friend. Uh, and man, when he got hurt, he was doing a hell of a job. I think he had won at race or two. Uh, could be wrong on the two races, but at least had won a race, and kind of, and I think he got robbed of having the opportunity of running for a championship. And uh, man, I, I hope you're right. I'd love to see Kurt come back. Uh, you know, I haven't heard a lot about you know his conditions and where he's at with his uh, uh, his uh, concussion. You know, if he's a 110% recovered or, you know, or if it's going to take a lot more, a lot longer. But, man, I'm excited to know, uh, excited to hear you speak about it when he is ready. I, I hope to see Kirk Bush back in a cup car competing full times. So I like to see him go out, uh, step out of the race car on his terms and not because he had a bad concussion. Right. The 2311 seems to be, you know, investing. They're getting ready for whenever Kurt is ready to come back uh, at some point, hopefully. Uh, Dominic, uh, a lot to take away, really, from just that one announcement there. I, on on the Elio side of things, I, I hope he gets to run. It might not work out, but uh, a guy like him that, you know, has won an Indy, has won an IMSA, um, if it's not this year, it's going to happen at some point for Elio Castroneves. But I hope somebody moves some mountains or something to get him a ride this year. <laughs> well, and I, I think, too, it's worth noting Don Hawk, who is one of the, the CEO – or not the CEO, but he's a higher up with SRX Racing. He, his connections to NASCAR run deep into the night. He's working with Jeff Bodine, working with Hoosier, working with all these different teams. And he's very active on Twitter. And he's mentioned that he wanted to help Helio if he won an SRX race last year, which he did. I'm talking about moving those mountains, Tyler, who's not to say the money team could be a potential ride option for Helio Castroneves. And I feel like I have heard that at a time or three that Helio could entertain that offer with a team like that. New York racing hasn't ruled out a potential Daytona 500 entry. Greg Biffle ran select races for that team last year. I still think there are options, but Tyler, they are definitely limited. Yeah, yeah, they they are for sure. Dominic, still more to get to. What else we got? Oh, well, there's still a lot more to get to. And, and, We'd be remiss if we didn't mention the passing of Robbie Knievel. 
Robbie Knievel passed away on Friday, January 13th after a brave battle with cancer. He'd been sick for about six months, according to some reports. And him and the Knievel family and their jumps and like, kind of like the sport, the daredevil sport they have created just amassed a large following. And yeah, well, another guy gone too soon. He he was 60 years old. And, and, and David, we were talking before the show and, and you had a little bit of connection to the Knievels or, or got to know him a little bit. Yeah, uh, man, what... <laughs> What a great guy, great friend. Uh, uh, we, we were friends for a long time, and I didn't see Robbie a lot, but we kept in contact. We'd call each other. and uh, But years ago, I don't even remember what year it was, uh, uh, you know, uh, Alan Tr. Jr., myself, Robbie Knievel, we did a, probably a, a seven, eight day tour, uh, went, a, went across the uh, south central part of the United States promoting uh, the truck race at the Texas Motor Speedway, the IndyCar race that uh, Alan Sir Jr. would be competing in. And then uh, before the IndyCar race, uh, Robbie Knievel would have a, a jump there at the Speedway and, you know, spending time with these iconic uh, personalities and superstars of our industry. Uh, man, you know, you're, you're in awe of being, uh, you know, Evil Knievel's son, but man, you really get to learn the person and the people they, they are. And, uh, man, Robbie was, uh, man, what a character he was, but man, what a loving sweetheart of a guy. My, not only did I, I mean, I just, I thought the world of him, my wife thought the world of him and he, and I know Eddie Gossage and Kenton Nelson, all the people at the Texas Motor Speedway, they'd loved him. And, uh, man, when I got news that he had passed away, I was really uh, – it was just really a sad day uh, uh, because, man, what a – he just had such a big personality and such a loving heart, you know. He was he was crazy and, and uh, nuts, but it took a person that's, got, that's crazy and nuts to get on the motorcycle and do what, what Robbie did, you know. And, uh, man, I'm just going to mess those times, you know, just to hear him voice when he called me up, hear his voice, couldn't believe his damn was Knievel on the phone, you know, and uh, and the times we got to spend together was just, you know, uh, those are memories I'll cherish forever, but just wish, you know, I could have spoken with him and didn't even know he was sick. Uh, but, you know, all I can say is cancer sucks, man. It sucks. For, I mean, it just sucks. And, uh, you know, I think all of us, uh, our listeners, Everybody in the industry, just everybody. I mean, we're touched with cancer once, some somehow, shape, or form, you know. And it's just, uh, it's terrible. But man, what a great guy he was, and I'm just saddened to see that he's uh, he's uh, he's gone. Yeah, no, just uh, heartbreaking, and uh, we're certainly thinking about the uh, Knievel family. Uh, Dominic uh, Kyle Larson, he didn't run the Chili Bowl this past week, but. He and Rick Hendrick have uh, something pretty fantastic up their sleeves for 2024. They sure do. Kyle Larson, along with a partnership with McLaren and Hendrick Motorsports, will try to fill an entry for the 2024 Indianapolis 500. Kyle Larson has expressed for years that he wants to make the double, the Memorial Day double, run the Indianapolis 500, run the Coca-Cola 600, and it looks like that opportunity is going to happen in 2024. And, guys, I got to say on this one, I was a little surprised hearing this announcement, especially since Rick Hendrick for a long time really didn't like his drivers racing outside of the Cup Series or anything that he had a, an attachment to, right? And we've seen that change. Kyle Larson continued to do his dirt racing and not only yeah, embraced Jake it. kind of pushed it. Exactly. And the fact that we're getting to see Rick Hendrick, McLaren, Kyle Larson, they're all going to partner up for the 2024 Indianapolis 500. That's pretty special. You can You can see how far this has come. It's come a long way. Well, and, and I would say, too, Dom, that you could argue Kyle Larson right now in all disciplines of motorsports is the best pure racer on the planet at yes. this point right now. Mm -hmm. And when he was out of a cup ride, when he got fired from Ganassi, um, A.J. Foyt straight up came out and said, I want to hire him for an IndyCar team, but I don't think that he – wants to run an IndyCar. I think he's going to go back to a cup team. And, of course, he was right. Um, Kyle, right now, if he decided to quit NASCAR, could be on any top team in IndyCar, they would take him. And he, I think he could probably adapt and win races pretty fast. 
David, um, I, I would not be shocked at all if Kyle Larson, now that we know he's got a year and a half to get ready for this, I think he's going to put in the work and – I would be would not be shocked if he puts together a hell of a performance there in the Indy 500 in 2024 with Hendrick backing and everything. Uh, they're going to give him the tools he needs to succeed. Well, uh, maybe I misunderstood you. Did you say 2024 will be the hit, his attempt at the Indianapolis 500? Yeah, yep, a year and a half out. Oh, I, I thought it was going to be this year. No, 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 2024. Okay. Well, man, I'm excited about it because he's the most diverse race car driver that can jump in anything. He's a Tony Stewart, a AJ Foyt uh, type of race car driver that can win in any type of racing car he gets into. And uh, man, it'd be kind of cool to see him in the IndyCar to see how he does, you know, and we were speaking about Kurt Busch earlier and man, I was so impressed with how Kurt Busch did when he did the, the double uh, I think it was two, three years ago. Might even been four years ago. I was really impressed by his performance, and then uh, and then watching Jimmy Johnson this past season uh, compete at the Indianapolis 500. I thought he did a hell of a job before he ended up crashing. Uh, but man, I'm uh, I'm excited to see Kyle Larson in the IndyCar first of all, and not you know, and what a special day that's going to be to be able to run the Indianapolis 500 and jump on a jet and fly over to Charlotte, North Carolina, and run the Coca-Cola 600. You know, that's that's exciting news, you know, and I'm I'm excited to see uh, somebody attempt to do that again, and, and not just somebody, somebody special in Kyle Larson. So that's that's exciting news for the industry. Yeah, no, that, that's that's a huge deal. Uh, Dominic, uh, we, we've seen guys do this before. We mentioned Kurt Busch, Tony Stewart, Robbie Gordon, um, but – for a guy that's right in his NASCAR prime here, this is a unique circumstance. I, I would argue that Kyle's got as good of a chance to, you know, complete every lap and and win both races as any driver's ever had before with the way they're setting this up a year and a half out. I mean, he's got he's he's got all the cards stacked in his direction here. You know all the engineers are going to be working hard at this. You have a year and a half to prepare for an effort like this. McLaren and Hendrick, Rick Hendrick, if he's going to attach his name done to something, he's going to want it done right. So you know this is going to be the best foot forward. And what better than to have the backing and the blessing of your NASCAR Cup Series owner? Not only does he want to see you do it, but he wants to be a part of it. And he truly believes in Kyle Larson. Otherwise, he wouldn't be doing this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now, I'm still more news. Still some more news, maybe a little bit late, but it's still worth mentioning. Anytime you watch NASCAR, you're listening to the broadcast, you're watching it on TV, you're hearing it on the radio. Well, a familiar voice will be taking over a role for somebody that had been there for a while. Adam Alexander will be going to the broadcast booth in addition to his NASCAR Xfinity Series duties, covering the NASCAR Truck Series as the play-by-play -play announcer. Vince Welch, who had been the play-by-play -play for several years, took to social media at the beginning of the year to say that he is no longer with Fox Sports and was going to be going in a completely new, different, different chapter and different direction for 2023. So different voice, familiar one, but a different voice for the truck series in 2023. Um, David, uh, first off, uh, Vince, uh, I always liked Vince. Uh, I, I've met him a couple times, uh, interviewed him. Great guy. I thought he did a really good job covering the sport and uh, did a good job calling the truck series. Uh, but, uh, but more important, but, it's sad to see him go. I'm, I'm happy to see our, our buddy, friend of the show, uh, somebody that's been a, a mentor for me for a long time, Double A, Adam Alexander, call the truck races. I remember Adam telling me years ago he wanted to be the play-by-play -play voice for the truck series on Fox. That was always a goal of his, something he always wanted to do, and now he's going to get to do it. He covered the trucks for a long time when you were in the series, David, uh, in the pits and everything here. Um you know, not not a knock on Vince. Don't take this at all. But uh, I think this is great for the Truck Series to have Adam Alexander back in in the uh, Truck Series uh, broadcast booth here, uh, David. Yeah, no doubt. It's hard to keep up. You know, these commentators they come and go. And Vince done. A, I mean, he did our spell. He did NASCAR racing. Uh, he did a hell of a job. He was a great commentator. The fans loved him. Uh, he bought. He brought a different spin to his to his commentating. I uh, was really surprised to see that news when I saw it. 
uh, Alex Alexander, you know, uh, obviously a friend of our shows here and, and been around for a long time, does a great job of his uh, broadcasting career. Uh, just sad, you know, you just wish there was a spot for everybody, you know, but we, we, uh, this is nothing new. Uh, you guys understand this more than I do, but, you know, you see these commentators come and go, you know what I mean? And uh, I think it's just part of the industry, you know, and uh, Vince did a, did a hell of a job, as y'all know, and we speak about, but Adam, Adam, Adam Alexander is going to do, even, you know, he'll, he, he, he'll do a great job. He's been around the sport. He's got a great voice and the, the wealth of knowledge he has on our industry. Uh, he will do it justice as well, you know, but definitely sad to see people come and go, you know, and, uh, you know, you, again, there's so many, we're not involved in all the decision makings and, and why a network would do that or not do it. It's just, uh, it's beyond me, but uh, you just, you hate that part of the industry we're in, you know, it's part of it. And, uh, but man, it's, uh, I feel like we, we, we lost a good one, but we gained a great one. You know, we lost a great one and, and bringing in another great, great one. You know what I mean? I just, uh, they're both fantastic. Really. Yeah. Dominic, uh, you know, we, we always appreciate the grind and the hustle. And, and for me, somebody like Adam, uh, is, is somebody I, I respect, not just as a person, he's a great guy, but the work ethic, a lot of these NASCAR commentators, they're at one network and they have half the season off. They're at home resting on vacation. Adam, you know, he's doing race hub during the week and now calling trucks and Xfinity and still calling college football and college basketball. Um, that, that, that guy doesn't sleep. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm sure he's not going to have any time off now or maybe he'll surrender some of the race hub stuff. But he's passionate about the sport. I wouldn't be surprised if he still does it. They're really going to owe him a lot of vacation after the season, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and then still some uh, some more headlines. Uh, the Chili Bowl uh, this past weekend down in uh, Tulsa and a familiar name associated with the win at the Chili Bowl there, Doc. Yeah, so no NASCAR notable. Chase Briscoe, of course, having the heartbreak at the Chili Bowl, but no Kyle Larson. No Christopher Bell, but Logan Seavey winning the 2023 Chili Bowl this past weekend. But a familiar car owner in the fact, Kevin Swindell. And the Swindells are synonymous with the Chili Bowl. And Kevin himself raced in the NASCAR Xfinity in the Cup Series at one point. But they had a return to victory lane, and it capped off the weekend there in your backyard, Tulsa. Yes, uh, very exciting. Uh, David, uh, you, you've been to the Chili Bowl before and seen that. Uh, Kevin Swindell is synonymous with the uh, Chili Bowl and uh, pretty exciting to see his team uh, back in victory lane there. Man, to see, uh, you know, Jeff Swindell and uh, and his car win the Chili Bowl is amazing. You know, I, I wanted to mention uh, a good friend of mine, uh, 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 Kyle Jones, that drives for State and Flurry. State and Flurry's uh, Flurry Racing Stables, obviously been one of our partners for years is, is part ownership in, in one of these midget cars, 7U. And, uh, you know, Staten's got some business partners that uh, that own a, a midget car. And Kyle Jones uh, is a great uh, kid from a Dallas-Fort Worth area. Hell of a sprint car racer, man. And they uh, uh, this kid can jump in any type of sprint car, USAC, World of Outlaw, you know, whatever. And he always runs up near the front and uh, – you know, they brought, they brought their home. I think they finished uh, – where they finished at? They either finished sixth or seventh. They, I think it was sixth. They finished sixth in the Chili Bowl. Man, that's uh, that's worth mentioning it. You know what I mean? I, uh, 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 Kyle's just a, a great race car driver. And uh, years ago, uh, I was talking to a State and Flurry about, you know, I think they were trying different drivers. And I said, man, you need a Kyle – you need you need to give Kyle Kyle uh, uh, give him a call give him a shot man and I think that was five six years ago and uh, they've been together ever since and winning races and doing well and they and they actually finished sixth in the in the in the uh, in the A main at the Chili Bowl and, and man I I, I want to say there's probably a thousand cars that show up for that you know so anybody that even makes the main event uh, they're true champions and all of them are winners you know what I mean but man what a what a race that that they held that they hold the Chili Bowl every year and and for those that, that are listening and never been you know it's something you got to go see because man these what these drivers do with these little midget race cars it's amazing the 
the talent and uh, and they make it look so easy and it's not. You know what I mean? We talk about. I think we mentioned some of our NASCAR guys were went over to the Tulsa to try to make it to the A main and and I don't think I don't I, I think none of them made it. But uh, but man, that's a, that's a it's a tough race with a lot of action and uh, man. Uh, Again, you know, I'm exaggerating on the number of cars, but it looks like to me every year there's over a thousand cars there. And uh, and congratulations to Kyle Jones, State and Flurry, and them for finishing sixth. And to Kevin Swindale, uh, Sammy's son, for uh, the victory that that they came home with there in a chili bowl. Pretty awesome event. Yeah. Uh, all right. I think this is the last item, Dom. Petty GMS no more. Welcome Legacy Auto or, or at Legacy Motor Club to the NASCAR Cup Series with Jimmy Johnson in the Ooh. 84 <laughs> car. Um, I, I, I gotta tell you, Dom, um, I know it's gonna be weird not seeing the Petty name there, but still being in the organization, Jimmy Johnson involved. I love the, I like this. Uh, I like the branding involved. We've seen. You know, Team Trackhouse established its own brand. And now, you know, 2311. And in this, this kind of feels like the direction NASCAR is going with these franchises here. I This, to me, it fits with Rick, with uh, with with Richard Petty and Jimmy Johnson involved here. I like the idea of this, this legacy motor club here. Well, and you always hear about founders, like if you're finding a company, you necessarily don't want to attach your name to it. And, and this kind of goes away from that label. There's no Petty. There's no... Maurice Gallagher, Jimmy Johnson. It's a legacy motor club. And Tyler David kind of has like a European sports car feel to it when I heard that. Legacy motor club. That's different. That's unique to the sport of NASCAR. And you're right. Teams are moving in that franchise kind of name, kind of model, if you will. And worth noting, too, Jimmy Johnson will attempt his first NASCAR Cup Series race in over two years when he tries to make the Daytona 500 next month. And that's going to be in a number 84 entry the inverse of the 48. And I think it was cool that they had the big announcement on today's show and hyped it up and made a big deal and had a lot of media there to cover it in, in New York City. So really cool to see the announcement and, and hype it up. And, and of course, it's worth hyping up. You have two of your three seven-time champions teaming up in Legacy Motor Club. So cool. David, what do you make of this transition of uh, Petty GMS to now Legacy Motor Club? Well, man, I love the fact that we're going to see Jimmy Johnson, seven-time cup champion, uh, drive the next-gen race car. I want to see how that turns out. I'm excited about that. And, I, I you know what, guys, I got to I gotta be honest with you. Uh, you know, ever since I was a little boy, uh, I've always been an A.J. Foyt, Richard Petty fan. You know what I mean? They, they were my heroes. And, uh, you know, it was always, to me, it's always been Petty Enterprises or – or Richard Petty Motorsports, you know, just just as, as as long as I can remember NASCAR racing or stock car racing, and you know, and I know the industry. Obviously, uh, uh, one thing about our industry, it it doesn't ever sit still; it's constantly changing, you know. And uh, and now with all these uh, franchise and, and looking like the Cup Series team owners, it's going to be a franchise, you know. I, I don't, you know, we're not there yet, but. You know, and everybody's kind of changing their name to kind of fit that style of, I don't even know what you call it, having franchise franchisee teams. Uh, but I'm going to miss uh, seeing the petty name associated with the ownership of a team. You know what I mean? And uh, but you know, if, if you know, that's a cool name. Uh, but man, I'm I'm going to mess in, uh, you know, Richard Petty Motorsports or Petty Enterprises or, or, or you know, I kind of uh, I kind of love the uh, the history of our industry of our sport, you know, and and seeing the Petty name uh, associated with the team ownership was I don't know it was just even though I'm not involved with any of that, it's just kind of cool and and for me, uh, it really just changes up the sport for me, you know what I mean? And uh, I know it's cool and the name's catchy and cool, but it's uh, it's got a little bit of a different meaning for me personally. Well, and, and what I wonder too then, uh, Dom, you look at some of these other teams that have older owners and we wonder how much longer they're going to be around. We know, for example, Hendrick Motorsports is eventually going to be passed off to Jeff Gordon. Do they keep the Hendrick name when Jeff Gordon is the primary owner? Um Joe Gibbs Racing, when when Joe retires, are they still going to be Joe Gibbs Racing? Or are they going to be 
JGR or have a whole new brand name here. That, that to me, now that we've seen the Petty name move on and, and go with this, the biggest of them all, I really wonder what the future holds for some of these other teams in that regard. And I think going back to that theme of not having your name attached, and I think the, the forever gratefulness that Jeff Gordon has for Rick Hendrick, I could see that staying Hendrick Motorsports. I'd see that name not changing. Maybe Joe Gibbs Racing becomes Gibbs Family Racing or because or of the just family. JGR. Or just JGR. Exactly. Just keep the initials. I think some of those legacy teams, you'll see that. I think Mike Dillon. JGR is already in its name, kind of. Yeah. Exactly. I think Mike Dillon would keep that with Richard Childress Racing, keep it RCR, as they moniker it, RCR Racing. I think some of those legacy teams stay like that. The Wood Brothers, et cetera. That's not going anywhere. But this is the new direction. New teams coming in with these fancy names. Right. I mean, even uh, even Penske is Team Penske, you know? I mean, uh, the, trying to create that brand of sorts. I, I like the direction the sport's going uh, in that sense. Our uh, Ask David segment is next. You can submit questions to us on Facebook, Twitter, and also by email, davidstarpodcast at gmail.com. And our first question in the inbox this week comes from Darko. Darker wants to know, for all three of you, we know the NASCAR community is a very giving one and always thinking of others. What are some charitable organizations and causes that are near and dear to your heart? David, we'll start with you. Man, the Speedway Children's Charity, the Texas Motor Speedway, and all the, you know, SMI tracks have a, have a charity, a Speedway Children's Charity associated with them. And over the years, uh, you know, my Uncle Mike, who founded and started Team Texas High Performance Driving School, donated hundreds of thousands of dollars to the charity, you know, so, you know, uh, uh, you know, that's really a charity uh, that I'm, that's near and dear to my heart. You know, we had Tony Stewart comes annually for uh, the Tony Stewart Foundation. Uh, but, you know, uh, I don't really have a particular one. I just like, you know, playing a small part of these charities and associations that really change children or kids lives for the better you know what i mean uh uh you know a lot of we get a lot of uh emails and and uh about you know signing a picture or giving away uh, a souvenir or a die cast car to 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 a kid that's struggling or for this organization so they can raise money now that I own a racing school, the, I, the Team Texas High Performance Driving School there at the Texas Motor Speedway, man, one of the things I'm proud of, when, when charities call and it's a charity that, that children benefit from it, I'm all about it. You know what I mean? So, uh, uh, man, I, I just love the charities that really that enhance and give children opportunities and take them out of the situation they may possibly be in at the present time. What about you, Dom? So I, like, I've been thinking about that question. I would say, like, on a national level, the ones that really, I, I think, that come to mind are, like, the St. Jude Foundation, the, the Ronald McDonald House Charities, the ones that, like David said, helping kids. And, and it just breaks your heart when you see a lot of those commercials. And But the, the good that those organizations do. And then even on a local level, I think of, like, the St. Vincent de Paul Food Bank and, like, your local communities. And they're always needing donations for food and just for people to put – a meal on the table. Those ones definitely speak to me or, or Catholic charities, anything that's trying to help the betterment of the community at the local level and, and the national level. But definitely, I think there, there's a few that come to mind, but but especially the St. Vincent de Paul and, and, and how good they, that a lot of those food banks do across the country. What about you, Tyler? Oh, yeah. A couple of things come to mind. As far as the national level goes, um, I, uh, I did work to promote the uh, Folds of Honor Foundation, uh, which also has NASCAR connections. They uh, had the Folds of Honor Foundation uh, 500 at Atlanta Motor Speedway for several years. Uh, Major Dan Rooney, I got to know uh, real well at several golf events over the years and interviewed him several times. He and I, we both went to school at the University of Kansas, and he was, uh, of course, went on to be a, a PGA golf pro and uh, went on to fight for our country and and uh, what he does with the Folds of Honor Foundation, they raise millions of dollars every year for the uh, children of fallen soldiers, give them scholarships. And uh, a terrific organization. They're based uh, in my hometown in Tulsa, and uh, they're growing like crazy. And it's amazing what they continue to do each and every year. And so 
Um, I salute Major Dan and and uh, what a great, wonderful man he is, and Christian man, and and uh, they've had some awesome partners. Uh, Quick Trip's been a big supporter of theirs. Budweiser, um, just to name a few, terrific organization. And then, uh, just from a personal standpoint, uh, my church back in in Kansas. Um, even as I, I moved away, uh, you know, I haven't lived there in a couple of years. I've always tried to financially support, do what I can every Thanksgiving. Uh, do, try, they try to go feed uh, people that don't have a Thanksgiving dinner and, uh, you know, try to go deliver Thanksgiving meals to people that don't have something to eat. And so what I've tried to do is, you know, whether I would live there or if I didn't donate and just be a part and, uh, you know, try to help provide some Thanksgiving dinners for people that, uh, so they can have a, a nice holiday, you know, with their, their loved ones and their kids and, and uh, just have food on the table. Uh, I mean, I know that, you know, the holidays are behind us now, but I'm sure all you're aware, I mean, it's, it's not cheap to eat some of these big old holiday meals, you know, and, and just having those, uh, meals like that, you know, makes all the difference. So that's kind of my backstory, uh, on that, on uh, that front. Great story, uh, guys. No doubt. Great story, you. ma'am. Thank you, David. Uh, the uh, next question that we have here in the uh, inbox, this one comes from Damien. And Damien wants to know, David, uh, what are you and your boys doing uh, during the off season? Uh, what are you doing in, in your downtime of sorts? <laughs> Well, uh, Damien, that's a great question, but we don't really have a lot of downtime. You know, uh, during the uh, Thanksgiving and holiday, you know, Christmas holidays, I I try to do, you know, uh, spend as much time with them. We, we go out and ride motorcycles and uh, play football, go watch movies, just, you know, just spending time going to eat dinner with them more so than I have been in the past throughout the year. Uh, but, man, we just – you know, we just try to to spend some father and son time together. Uh, they they come to the race shop. They love helping me work on our on, on our racing school race car race cars and uh, and man, just just hanging out with them is uh, for me is uh, and getting to be a dad. One because during the season I'm so busy, I don't really get to do a lot of father son stuff with them and uh so that was all that's always been it, it has been a lot of fun and i'll continue to do as much as you can but man it's uh you know uh love we all love what we do for a living uh, uh being a being a right nascar race car driver and being a part of a great sport takes me away from home a lot and uh you know, but trying to find a balance is, uh, is really uh, a challenge for all, not only me, but all the other people involved in this industry. But uh, but definitely spend, I spent as much time with my kids doing cool stuff. We went fishing, riding motorcycles and four-wheelers, going to the race shop, working on race cars, going to the mall, watching movies, just, just trying to be a, a father, just trying to create memories for my boys so when they get older, they remember what, what them and their pops did. <laughs> Great question, though. Uh, Dominic, uh, you got a little downtime right now uh, before the season starts, <laughs> uh, and you've had a little change in your world, uh, just a little bit. Just a little change for the better, yeah. Yeah. No, no like a little Christopher. Gosh, he's been so much fun to to see. And I, I got home a few days ago. I'll share this with you guys and walked through the door. I hadn't seen him in a few days, and, and there's his mama and – Christopher playing there on on the floor and his little play mat, his little play gym. And my wife picks Christopher up and and he sees me and he starts, he has no teeth, right? And he's got the little toothless smile and he starts smiling and then he stops. And then he smiles again after a few seconds and he stops. And then he smiles again. He did it four times and it was just like, wow, that's so cool. It moved me to tears. It moved my wife to tears. It was just so cool, like being able to come back and see him after being gone for a few days of work. So yeah, there's been a lot of good changes and being able to see him grow and just spend as much time as I can with him. It's It's been a change in our lives, but for the better. God has truly blessed us. That's great. How about you, Tyler? Uh, my downtime, when uh, when I do have downtime, I, I'm, I'm resting, I'm sleeping, um, <laughs> trying to relax a bit. Uh, but 
Uh, been uh, really just exploring Dallas, getting to know this city, and uh, you know, just trying to find new hangouts and explore it with my friends and go to as many you know sporting events and concerts and whatnot when I can. And and uh, you know, David, I, I've been here since uh, since March. You know, it'd be it's been ten months now. And uh, I'm still finding new things too, David. I, I feel like even 10 months in, I haven't even touched the surface level yet. Yeah, no doubt about it. And and Dom Tyler didn't just kept us from us. Now we got a now we got a cowboy fan and 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 no. Tyler. No. Tyler no. Well, he Tyler, likes to dress like a cowboy. Somebody, he's been hanging out at the Dallas Cowboy Complex a lot here lately. Now he's been hiding that from us. Uh, but uh, but now, man, it's. Uh, there's plenty to do in Texas. A lot of great cities, uh, a lot of great people, a lot of great uh, events going on, and things to see and things to do. And uh, man, it'll it'll take you years, Tyler, to, to do them all, buddy. But uh, but I'm glad you're having a great time. And and uh, and let us know when you come out of the closet on being a Dallas Cowboy fan. Okay. <laughs> I he thought you were going to like to dress like there. one, so so that has to go for something, right, Tyler? <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, big win for the Cowboys uh, this past week against uh, Tom Brady and the Bucks. But no, 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 David, you know my loyalty, uh, you know, lies with my Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, Absolutely, man. There they are, back uh, behind me. Right there. <laughs> got well, I got to say though, he, he does sound like a Cowboys fan every year, David, because he's like, "Oh, the Chiefs are great. The Chiefs are the best. The Chiefs are the best. The Chiefs are going to win this if year." They the actually do prove it, though. You know, well, yeah, they have won the Super Bowl every year. They've done, they've done it once in the last what four years. They make the playoffs every year. They're pretty good, but Tyler kind of overbuffs them a little bit. Yeah, I mean, they've been the best uh, team the last uh, four years, and <laughs> I feel pretty good about this year's chances. We'll see how it plays of out, you guys. Do. Uh, we got to go. We got to put the checkered flag out in this show. Uh, a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of news that we had to cover that's wow. happened this past week. And uh, we look forward to being back here next week. As always, subscribe to the show. New episodes out each and every Wednesday. Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. Leave us a five-star review or don't leave us one at all. Follow us on social media, facebook.com slash starpodcast, Twitter at starpodcast, and by email, davidstarpodcast at gmail.com. For David Starr and Dominic Olagun, I'm Tyler Jones. Thanks so long. It's been another edition of Let's Go Racing. We'll see you next week.